Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, my name is Donna, and for those of you not new, thank you so much for continuing to come back and support my channel. I appreciate all of you so, so very much. Today we are doing my next palette roulette in which I let an app choose a palette for me. I utilize it throughout the week, and when I come back to you, I talk to you about my experiences with the palette, show you some pictures of the looks I created, and show you some live swatches. Today, I won't be live swatching the whole palette. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. I think you guys need that. <laughs> um, but today's palette that we're talking about is a rather new palette out on the market. It's still available, even though it's limited edition, and it is the Pat McGrath Labs Celestial Divinity Palette. You guys, when this palette launched, I was like, yes. <laughs> I have to, I have to have it, mostly because I do have some Pat McGrath palettes. This is one of her full size palettes, this is what it looks like. And I do have some of her minis, and I have her lipsticks. I love Pat McGrath, I do. Her mattes are not my favorite formula. They don't like blend out very well, I don't feel like, or sheer out is a better thought process. They do blend out very well, but they don't sheer out very well. And I like to use, like, I don't go in with a transition color or anything like that. I go straight in with pigment and then try and blend it out as best I can. So like Pat McGrath's mattes are not my favorite, but they're not my favorite because of me, not, not because of her or her formula. Her formula is divine in many, many, many ways. Her special shades, her glitters, her shimmers, that is truly where it's at in my opinion as far as her brand goes and this palette is mostly that it's not got any of her special shades but it is mostly her shimmers her glitters her duochromes those kind of shadows this palette was a holiday 2020 palette for Pat McGrath Labs and when it first launched it launched at $78 for the palette and we were all kind of in this place of shock because these palettes, which have 10 shades in it, are $125, whereas these, this one has 18 shades and it was $78. So immediately we were all like, is this the same quality as normal Pat McGrath shades? Me, owning two of her minis, know that within those minis, those shadows are the same quality as her regular shades. And the reason why I know that is because many of those shadows in the minis, all of the shadows in the minis existed already in my Pat McGrath regular palettes. So I know that they perform the exact same. So I was like, this is probably not going to perform any different. And I feel like, I was vindicated in this because this eye look and all the eye looks I show you came from this palette and while I do not believe that this is a standalone palette I did have to encompass mattes from many different places in my collection a lot of the matte shadows that I'm using in the looks I think two specifically had single shadows from my Sydney Grace line uh, I don't believe that this is an all-encompassing palette, but I do believe that this is a wonderful palette for that pop of color or that pop of shimmer, I guess is where I'm trying to go with this on your lid. So these are beautiful. So let's start here. This is what the palette looked like. It looks like it does come in a box that I still have somewhere. I'm not sure where I put it. But it comes in a box that looks very much like this on the outside of the palette. This is what the palette looks like. It is just cardboard. These items here are raised. This here is raised. So I see this maybe, you know, catching on something, getting like pulled up in the corners or something. I'm not sure. This section here where it has all the details that the normal palettes have on the back is in the cardboard of the package. It's not like a sticker. So this is what the front of the palette looks like and this is what the back of the palette looks like. This is again a sticker or an overlay so I can see it potentially getting like caught in the corners on something else in my collection and maybe pulling up. 
I am probably going to keep this one in the box just because of all the stickers. This I'm thankful for, honestly, that the shade names are on the palette somewhere because on these palettes, the shade names are not on the palette anywhere. They're not on the front, not on the back, not in here. They come on a cardboard piece of paper that you're supposed to keep with the palette, but they also don't fit inside the palette. So that's annoying in my opinion. So I'm actually pretty grateful that the shade names are on the palette somewhere. But those of you who have been around, you know that I don't like it when palettes don't put the names of the shadows with the shadows and there is plenty of room on this palette to do that. I mean, it's a catch 22. As long as the names are on the palette, I guess that makes me happy. But at the same time, there's a lot of room inside the palette for them to have done that. So the inside of the palette does have a really, really large mirror. And then this is what the shadows look like. A little bit of an annoyance, this palette does have these ribbons here to keep the top elevated <laughs> so that you can use it, I guess, as a like vanity, right, kind of mirror. But with that said, I had to like stretch those ribbons so that this stayed up. The ribbons actually kind of were not conducive in the beginning when I first opened it up to keeping the palette open. The palette wanted to continue to shut on me, so I just kind of stretched it just a little bit, and now it, it does lay open. I am thankful for these ribbons for that purpose, but at the same time, they're kind of annoying. Like, I am thinking about cutting them off, if I'm honest. I do like it when my palettes stay up like that for usage as a vanity, but I can count probably on one hand how many times I have used the mirrors in my palette in that manner. So that's a nothing kind of moment for me. So I am indeed thinking about cutting the ribbons off. At the same time, I do think the ribbons kind of cheapen the palette just a little bit. I know where she was going with this and that is I think that lends to the price point, right? It's cardboard packaging. Cardboard packaging is relatively cheap. It does have a giant mirror inside of it, but cardboard packaging is relatively cheap. In addition to that, the pans in this palette, there are 18 pans in this palette for a total of 0.69 ounces of product. So each one of these pans is 0.038 ounces of product. That is just about 0.01 ounces less than what is in her regular size pans. This is what, again, her regular size pans look like, and this is what these pans look like. So you can see they're, they're quite a bit smaller. They're about the same size as a quarter, I would say, whereas these are about the same size as like a half dollar. This product, like I said, does cost $78. It came in at five stars on the Pat McGrath Labs website. Going through the reviews, and there were 374 of them, going through the reviews, there were some four-star reviews of this palette. Most of them were talking about fallout that occurs with some of the chunkier shades in here, but it still has a five-star review, and I just think that there were a minimal amount of four-star reviews. There are no reviews that are three stars or less. I can't necessarily say that I don't think that that's accurate because... You know, it's Pat McGrath, but I do see some one-star reviews on Sephora, so it makes me go, hmm, hmm. This is not me saying that Pat McGrath is taking the one-star reviews and pulling them off of her page. That is not what I'm saying. I'm just saying those people that are the best reviews are going to that page and that's it because there were some one-star reviews on Sephora. Sephora does have a 4.6 star rating and 624 reviews. So the fact that they do have one-star ratings, there are 624 of those reviews and it still pulls a 4.6 stars. I think that that's fair. I think that 4.6 stars is fair. I would probably honestly rate it like 4.8 honestly. There's 18 shadows in here. Three of them are matte. So the only matte shadows you have are this one right here, this one right here, 
and then this like red brown shade right here while I do think that they are the perfect three mattes to have in this palette to go with just about any eye look that you want to put with it I would say that if you need lighter tones for like setting your eyeshadow primer or buffing into your brow bone you're not going to get it from this palette even the golds in here which I might normally put into my brow bone the lighter the two lighter golds they're just a wee bit too chunky to go into your brow bone and I only know that because I tried it this one way too chunky this one just a smidge bit too chunky but still a little bit too chunky and it is a little bit of a dual chrome so it could totally shift your eye look dependent on where you're placing it 12 of these shadows are from an existing vault with Pat McGrath and I think I've spoke to this before these six here and these six here so these these four external rows they're from the Star Wars palettes that she has I believe the ones I pulled out were the Dark Galaxy and the Galactic Gold. So these ones are from the Dark Galaxy and these six are from the Galactic Gold. I do believe that's how it went. Uh, so the new shades in the palette are these six here in this middle section. What is kind of frustrating is this one is a new shade to her range, but this one and this one right here are super similar so I don't really think that they necessarily both needed to be in the palette so if you're going to create six new shadows to go with the uh, you know 12 that you already have in here what I do love that she did was put two make two of those six shadows mattes because otherwise this palette would only have one matte but I don't like that we kind of doubled up on some of the shadows that were already in existence in this palette the other two I feel like are super similar are bronze and bronze nebula this one here and this one here now granted these two came from existing shadows or existing palettes so neither one of those was new so that warms my heart that she didn't put a third bronze shadow in here that matched the other ones I just feel like they're too similar to be in the same palette so I'm gonna show you so these are the two golds this one is lunar champagne and this one is galactic gold this one does have a wee bit of a shiftiness to it but when you swatch them they just look too much alike and on the eye they're so so similar but you guys look at how beautiful these are so the two bronze ones that we have here this one is Bronze Nebula, and this one is Bronze. You guys can see it just in the sw finger swatches, but Bronze Nebula, Bronze, just too much alike. But that is four shadows within the 18 shadows that I feel are a little bit redundant. And that is it. The rest of the shadows are very, very different from each other. The rest of the shadows look very different on the eye. I have three of the purples in my eye look today. I'm trying to think. Three of the purples and then the more purple leaning matte in my eye look today and you can see that there's definitely a difference in all the tones. So I have this matte on my eye look today. This one here and then I have this purple here which is more of a matte with glitter in it but the glitter you can see and I'll swatch that for you I have this one here on my eye look today and then I also have this one here it's got a little bit of a dual chrominess to it so those are the four shadows that are on my eye look today I definitely think that I mean just in the finger swatches you can tell the difference on the eye you can tell the difference I definitely think that they show up quite differently in your eye look and you guys can see that that black one that looked black on my finger showed up very very purple it is a matte with glitter in it it's got so much glitter in it that it would be you'd be hard-pressed to put it on your eye look and not get that glitter in your look now I will say that when I first started putting it on my eye I'm like this is like any other matte with the glitter on it in it I can't see the glitter but <laughs> 
as I put more shadow into it, you can definitely see the glitter. It definitely got all glitterified in there and now it looks like I'm just like blue all over my eye right now. Like I said, each pan is approximately 0.01 ounces less product than her regular palettes and there are no specialty shades in here or no hybrids is what she calls them, but there are a ton of other special shades in here. Each one of these shades has intense pigmentation upon application onto your eye. Each one went down really, really super well, really very creamy. No texture was, you know, present when I was putting them into my eye looks. They didn't increase any texture in my eye looks which I thought was fantastic for a lot of us, especially with aging skin. <laughs> we can't do certain like things on our eyes without the expectation that our texture is going to be present on our eyes. This palette didn't do that. The glitters adhere very, very well. I didn't use a glitter glue today with that, that purple shade and I feel like the glitter is there. Yes, I got some fallout Yes, I will see probably some potential of fallout throughout the day. That has been my experience with the glitters in this palette, but it's not horrible. And if you use a glitter glue, it's probably going to be non-existent. I feel like the worst one was this Lunar Champagne one right here. That one is a little bit more loosely pressed in the pan. So I did have quite a bit more fallout with that one. And I did feel the fallout throughout the day with that one a little bit more than I have felt it with any of the other glitters. In this palette, it worked well with other shadows that I have in my collection. There wasn't a problem with blending these into any other shadow formula that I was using. They blend out by themselves really, really well. Even the more satiny or shimmery formulas blend out really very well. And one of the eye looks that you'll see has this Saturnalia? Saturnalia? I don't know. I don't know what the shadow name is, but it has that on the lid and then it has oranges and yellows up towards the brow. And I blended out that red into my crease, into the orange, and it just blended so perfectly. I could have used that shadow alone all the way up and it would have been a beautiful, that's also one thing I would say about this is if you're looking for a palette that you can have a one and done eye look with, this is a, a perfect palette for that. All of these shadows are so pigmented, go on pretty opaque from the go, um, and they blend so, so well. They work well with or without primer. Uh, this eye look, I have primer on. The yellow red eye look that you guys will see, I did not have primer on. I think there's one other eye look that I did with this palette that I didn't have eye primer on. I never noticed any <laughs> fading with these shadows. And I keep my eye makeup on for a good 10, 12 hours before taking it off. Today it's been on for about three hours and there, there's no movement, no fading, no anything. So I would say your wear time for these shadows is right around that 10 to 12 hour mark, easy, before fading occurs. Because as I said, I didn't notice any kind of fading. And I take my eyeshadow off about 10 hours after putting, having put it on. Some nights a lot later than that and still didn't notice any fading. Yesterday when I was taking off my makeup, I was, God, I wish I had had my camera on me because I was going to take a picture of the eye look that I had as I took my makeup off. Yesterday's eye makeup was on for 13 hours before I took it off. So it looked brand new. I, I wish I would have taken a picture. These shadows are phenomenal. So what I would say about that is I know that there was a lot of hubbub around the YouTubes about, you know, why this palette was $78. What was up with this palette? Why nobody was going to get it because they were afraid. This is a holiday palette done right. This isn't the holiday palettes that have that we have come to expect as a consumer base because what we have come to expect is that the holiday palettes are there to reel people in, they're to reel new customers to their line, they're cheap, they're easy, and they've got poor quality as far as the shadows go, right? That's what we're seeing from the likes of, say, Too Faced. This one is nothing like that. This is a holiday palette done right. It's got the same 
pigmentation, the same workability, the same wonderful things that you see from Pat McGrath and her regular size palettes in a smaller formatted, easier to consume as a consumer palette because it's got cardboard packaging and smaller pans. I think that is the only reason why this palette wasn't the $200 that we all expected it was going to be for Pat McGrath with 18 shades in it. I also really, really love that she is a brand that knew that there was challenges and opportunities around a launch that she had, and she brought that launch back to the people in a different way so that it wasn't like just a relaunch of that same product, but a relaunch of that product in a way that could excite people all over again. So as I said, these 12 shades, they did come out and that those Star Wars palettes, but that launch was kind of hit and miss. That launch was a mess. And it was, I think, the first time I've ever heard of a Pat McGrath launch happening that was as messy as it was. And she brought those shades back for people that weren't able to get in on that. And I think that that's fantastic. I do know that part of the interest in that launch was the fact that it was Star Wars. For me, the interest in that launch for me was the color stories, not the fact that it was Star Wars, because I think I've said it before, I, um, I don't know much about Star Wars. I think the packaging in that collection that I really went gaga over is the lipsticks, the C-3PO and the, um, what's the other robot's name? I can't even, I can't even remember that. Those were where I kind of went gaga over the palettes. I loved the color story, but didn't like the palette necessarily. And I don't like her packaging that is the six pan palettes in that packaging that has to be so bulky, like you have to keep them in your collection in that box. Like with this one, I could pull it out of that box and keep that box otherwise. But with those ones, you have to keep them in those bulky boxes. And I don't like those bulky boxes. So in addition to the fact that I don't know much about Star Wars, I also don't like the bulky boxes. So I was able to get the color stories that I love in a different palette that is more slim, more streamlined, and will fit better into my collection. I hate these ribbons. I think these ribbons are ridiculous. I know why they're there, but I think it kind of cheapens the palette, to be honest. It reminds me of something that uh, a brand would do to like elevate their experience with their cheap cardboard packaging, but we know what Pat McGrath is about. So for me, it was about the shadows, not about the not about the component. I don't need this kind of component in my collection. As a matter of fact, this palette can't live with my other palettes. So I don't reach for it very often because I forget it's in my collection. Even when I'm doing like the clutters or, or inventory, I forget it's in my collection oftentimes because of where I have to place it in my collection because of its packaging. It's beautiful, but I don't need this kind of packaging. This one actually fits much better in my collection. I am gonna go through and swatch these. I feel it's important, especially since this is a palette that is still clearly on the market, but not a palette that many people have at this moment. I am gonna go through the top row, then the middle row, then the bottom row. So this is that Saturnalia. Saturnalia is a really pretty red, shimmer that kind of flashes a little bit pink dependent on what color of mattes that you have with it. I really did like this. It has a little bit more of an orangey impact to it on the on an eye look. Then we have this one here which is gold ne or bronze nebula. Then we have major mahogany which is one of the mattes and you guys can see this one is kind of like a red brown. And then we have that one there, which is Lunar Champagne. This is probably the most loosely pressed one in the palette that it, I mean, in my experience anyways. It did cause some amounts of fallout and fallout throughout the day more so than others. Then we have Violet Void, which is that one there. It's so pretty. 
and then we have gold standard which is a beautiful like 24 karat gold kind of colors I really do think that the mattes in this palette were very thought out because I do think that the mattes in this palette go significantly well with the other shades you guys can see that that red that Saturnalia I mean it's showing up a wee bit coral in the screen I really do feel like it's kind it's kind of an orange pinky shifty red versus a red red I think that you get a really great red out of another shadow in this and it's kind of a multi-chrome honestly the next row we have this one here which is venomous void and this is the second matte in this palette. It's got a really nice purple tone to it. It is in my eye look today. Then we have this one, which is Odyssey. Odyssey is a little bit of a duochrome. It looks like gold and pink or lavender in your eye looks. It does the same thing. It is so, so pretty. And then we have this one here, which is Fuchsia Shock. And then we have this one here, which is Megabyte. It is uh, very much an olive tone green. I think it's the only one in this palette I haven't been able to use. So the next one is Bronze. And then this one, which is Electron. And Electron is a really pink, blue, purple duochrome. And you guys can see that as I move my hand around. It is so so pretty and I feel like that's part of the reason why my eye looks so blue today you guys look how beautiful this is this one here is a beautiful like center of the lid for a halo eye I do firmly believe I think I used it as a halo eye in one of my eye looks we have cosmic first this is a beautiful goes on so so easily it's kind of a duo chromey shadow it's like lavender pink orange i would almost say that this one's a multi-chrome and there's another one in here that i also feel that way about but it only shifts two ways that you can see really well but there is a third shift in there that i feel like makes this more of a multi-chrome than a duochrome this is on the inner portion of my eye look today then I have this one here, which is Smoked Amethyst. It is a black base with purple glitter, but you guys can see the glitter shows up so, so well in your eye look that I have a hard time saying, this is a mat with glitter in it and getting kind of pissed off about it. <laughs> then we have this one, which is Dragonfly. It is also a duochrome, so it's got that is it one of those red brown shifty dual chromes maybe probably okay then we have the third and final matte in this palette and it is called venusian orchid i love the names of her of her shadows i just think that the names are so interesting so the last two shades are this one here which is galactic gold such a beautiful metallic and then this one this one is called Corruption, and this is the one that I said I do believe is kind of a multi-chrome because it has this like bronze, red, green shiftiness to it. And you can see all three of those while I feel like the green is a little bit less likely to make the most present appearance. I do see just looking at it and I see it in eye looks that three tiers of different colors so this is the last row of shadows in that palette and I'm going to try and move my hand around so that you can see enough of that corruption to see the shiftiness you guys it is just so so pretty it is beautiful in an eye look just packed on to your lid and a dark liner across it oh my god I think that this is a fantastic palette I can't be happier that I have it in my collection while I love this palette and the luxury feel of this palette I think that honestly this one will get more use in my collection because I'm able to store it with my other palettes so I'm going to be able to look at it every single day whereas this one is stored up here and I only really see it honestly when I'm here watching or doing videos if you're unfamiliar with Pat McGrath 
shadows and you want a bigger version of Pat McGrath shadows than what the minis provide. I do think that the minis would be $50 for 10 shadows. This is 78 for eight more shadows. So I don't think that that's a whole, and these shadows are much bigger and they're all her you know, like shimmer, glitter, duochrome, maybe even a couple multi-chrome like formula. There's only three of her mattes there. The mattes in this palette I actually quite liked. What I don't like about her mattes are what make her mattes spectacular. Honestly, they're mattes that are a little harder to work with. They take a lot of time to sheer out and about as sheer as you're ever going to get them is like what you see in my eye looks today. And I know that it looks like it's sheared out, but it's actually not as sheared out as it could be. I think that I know many, many creators that like Pat McGrath's mattes for the same reasons that I don't like them. And it's not really that I don't like them, it's that I don't like working with them. I think that they're beautiful mattes. With that being said, I might work with this palette again just to get a better assessment of how I feel about Pat McGrath. I love this palette. I'm glad to have it in my collection. I am so glad that I got to use it over the last week. I was impressed with every single shadow I put on my eyeballs from this palette and it inspired me to want to do my makeup every single day. That is a resolution I've made for myself. I will get up every day. I will put my makeup on every day if for no other reason but to feel like a human being. But it inspired me to want to come in here and put something on my eyes. I wanted to use every single one of those shadows in that palette. I wanted to get them on my eyes. I wanted to see what they look like. So am I sad I spent $78 on it? No. I, I didn't actually spend $78 on this. When it first came out, there was a coupon code that you could use to get 10% off. So I think I spent, with tax and shipping and everything, I think this palette cost me $72. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay with getting a deal on Pat McGrath. I'm okay with this palette. Mattes aren't where it's at for me when I think of Pat McGrath. So I'm okay with the fact that there's also only three mattes in this palette. So do you have this palette? I would be interested to know your thoughts on this palette and if they're the same as mine. All right, guys, so now we're gonna pull a new palette. For those of you who are unaware, I do have a Samsung Note 9. I do have an app on my Play Store that I pulled called the Decide Now app. It is just kind of a Wheel of Fortune application. I put all the palettes that I owned into this app when we first started this. As I use them through Palette Roulette, I do pull them out. As I haul new palettes in with you guys, I do put the new palettes in here. This is what we have left to go through as far as what my inventory looks like at this present moment in time. I'm gonna press that button, it's gonna pull us a new palette. I got the, oh my God, the Lunar Beauty Eternal Eclipse palette. And this is a brand new palette, again, out on the market. It was Manny's release for holiday for Lunar Beauty. And I am so excited. So let me go pull that. I will be right back. All right, guys, this is the palette that we will be using next week. This is the Lunar Beauty Eternal Eclipse palette from Manny Emmyway's line. And if you guys don't know, I kind of stand Manny. He is the love of my life. But he is the first person I started watching here on YouTube and taught me so, so much. I've done a recreating one of his makeup looks, man, when I first started on YouTube. And I have every single palette that he has made. And I finally was able to order the blush palette as well. So I'm waiting for that to arrive. This is what it looks like. How amazing is this palette? And this is what it looks like inside. I am actually terrified 
and excited all at the same time. So this is very neutral along the matte line, but we've got some crazy, amazing, cool tones in here. I went for a very long time without wearing blues and greens on my eyes because I think they kind of make me look a little bit dead. Um, but also they're terrifying, right? You don't want to look like Mimi from the Drew Carey show and you don't look, you don't want to look like you're trying too hard or like you don't know what you're doing. Um, but recently I have started wearing an awful lot of blues and greens on my eyes just because number one, people keep challenging me to do it and they, I, I get compliments every single time I wear blues and greens on my eyes. So I am actually really excited to purchase this a, or to use this a year ago, maybe even eight months ago, I, I wouldn't have even purchased this. This would not have been on my radar. I would have been like, Manny, you're doing me wrong, babe. But this year it was a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. Blue's a thing for me. So with that being said, I hope that you guys are in it for next week. And I hope that means that you have subscribed to my channel. You've hit that notification bell and that you are going to await my palette roulette for next week. I hope that you have all given this video a big thumbs up if you liked it or a thumbs it down if you didn't. Either way, please leave me some feedback, some comments down in the comments section. I would love to hear from each one of you. Let me know what palette you're using in your palette a week. Let me know your thoughts on the palette that I just got done reviewing, your thoughts on the palette that I'm about to review. Let me know your thoughts, you guys. Give me some, give me some chatter down there in the comments section. I would love to communicate with all of you. I hope that your January is you well we're about halfway through it how crazy is that and I hope that 2021 is so far treating you well and I hope that you all are out there wearing your mask keeping yourself safe when you're out in public because as far as I'm concerned we can't be safe enough so wear your mask keep yourself safe for no other reason and I hope you all are loving each other but loving each other from afar and until next time bye everyone